Okay, great. Welcome back. Uh, we're ready to get going again. I'm really uh, honored to uh, introduce our next speaker. This is Daniela Braga, who is the uh, founder and CEO of Defined AI. So welcome, Daniela. All right. Good morning, everyone. So my talk today is about um, bias in AI, which is a hot topic these days. And, 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 the clicker. All right, all right. So what is bias? So bias is when algorithms uh, perform results that bring um, prejudice. And, uh, and this is very, and, and in fact, um, the dangers of that uh, are, according to um, Megan Smith, they impact, they may impact uh, anything from hiring, employment, insurance, housing, credit scores, which translates into further stereotype reinforcement of certain classes of, uh, of people or groups of people and minorities. And where does AI start? Nothing better than AI itself, an AI itself, to explain it. Uh, please meet my avatar, the synthetic version of myself. Yeah. Data is the new code in the AI era. AI is as good as the data you feed it, as you can see by the quality of my voice and my synthetic image. I am 100% synthetic, built from 500 phonetically balanced phrases, and 15 minutes of video recording. My data is provided by Define.ai and my algorithms are powered by Microsoft and Synthesia. But data occurs in different points in the pipeline, as we will see next. So data occurs, uh, so bias occurs in different points of the machine learning pipeline, as you can see, and data is uh, where everything starts. So. Uh, according to, uh, I'm using, uh, through this presentation, I'm using a, res a recent research study published in uh, August uh, of this year by Srivanasan and Shander that illustrates very well all the aspects of the, of, of the machine learning pipeline and where can bias be introduced. Starting with, um, starting with the data part and the sampling part of the data. Uh, one of the most uh, typical examples of uh, bias in data uh, are happening facial recognition applications. In 2018, um, a, a researcher, uh, a researcher Joy uh, Bolami Winnie, an MIT researcher, uh, published a benchmark uh, comparing the top. Uh, the top facial recognition commercial systems, Microsoft, IBM, Facebook, and Amazon. As a matter of fact, I do encourage, and this, the whole presentation has lots of links. It's, it will be made available. Um, you, I encourage everyone to uh, go through some, of, some or all the links. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a Netflix, uh, a Netflix show documentary uh, talking about this study and everything that it, uh, all the ripple effect of it called uh, coded bias that I really encourage everyone to watch to, to uh, everyone that is really uh, into this uh, bias in AI uh, area. So the results of this benchmark uh, show that every commercial system performs uh, worse, terribly worse, the darker skin, the skin uh, of, of the people are. And, and in fact, uh, and, and so the, and a lot of the, the results, two years later, of, after all these benchmarks, IBM, Microsoft, Facebook, improved their systems, uh, and Amazon eventually banned uh, the use of their Amazon recognition system by the US police, because this is actually, this was actually uh, getting, even more, uh, it, it took two years to get to this point. But uh, it, it kind of shows uh, how dangerous this can really be 
uh, in, 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 in applications that actually mess with, uh, with people's, people's lives. Um, Facebook is also, another example in this slide shows Facebook also, um, and it's a 2019, uh, 2019 study by the New York Times, where you see that Facebook apologizes after AI puts primates label on videos, videos of black men. Similarly, in 2015, Google search results were uh, rendering uh, black men with gorillas. Same thing. So this, this just shows how, this is a data problem. And, uh, and it actually un unveils why is it a data problem? Because the way uh, commercial systems, big tech commercial systems are built are with user, uh, are with the, with um, data that comes from using uh, free available products that are traditionally used by uh, white men who, have, who are early adopters of technology because they have uh, more economic power and more uh, access to technology. Now, we talked about facial recognition, but let's move to voice recognition. Uh, in 2020, Another research study that actually was, uh, so this, is, uh, this was based out of a research study that uh, some academics published, benchmarking similarly the, the top commercial systems, Apple, IBM, Google, Amazon, and Microsoft speech recognition systems uh, against uh, uh, white and, and, uh, and black people. And all of them invariably performed much, much uh, worse within the black uh, communities. And it's the same story. It's a, a data problem. It comes from how these commercial systems have been using uh, data from users that don't know, that are opting in without knowing they're opting in, that, that are signing in terms of services that don't know what their data is for. And in the end, uh, you have huge gaps of representation in, in your data. Uh, speech matics, uh, for example, so actually in the startup world, you see much more, you see a different approach. You see speech matics uh, uh, showing the opposite, saying we do perform better. And it's mostly because startups have uh, access to data uh, in a different way. For example, uh, going through uh, acquisition purchases of data. Uh, that are and not using data that is pushed by usability of, uh, of clients. <clears throat> now, the text part. Text, natural language processing, is also affected by bias in AI. Uh, Emily Bender is a Washington uh, University professor, very renowned, and she's explaining that not always a large data set is a good data set. And in text, in natural language processing, uh, the, the, uh, the, the numbers, the, the amount of numbers is important. You've got to have large data sets. But oftentimes, what researchers do and uh, data scientists do is scraping the web, which again, the scraping of the available source, sources are Wikipedia, Reddit, and um, Twitter, and again, very misrepresented represented by uh, women and LGTB communities. So same problem happens in NLP. And, uh, and, and again, a lot of these co the consequences in are uh, especially in hate speech, violent speech, and, and so on. Now, other types of data have to do, have other types of uh, bias happen in different phases. So, Measurement. Measurement and how do you look at the data is another, another way. Uh, in this example, uh, we talk about healthcare system. And in the healthcare system, uh, so uh, a way, this, this article in 2019 is basically uh, claiming that uh, a lot of the results of, um, for healthcare uh, uh, recommendations uh, were, t were saying that, the, that white people have, uh, were, should have more access to or should be uh, 
uh, better covered by health, health uh, systems and health insurance based out of the history expenditure of, on, on, of, of the records. So obviously, if the white people have more access and more economic power to go for, uh, for to go to, uh, to use uh, healthcare, the history, sh it's again a problem of, this is a problem of measurement, is how you're looking at your data um, instead of actually looking at the reality. Uh, it's just uh, the, the, the people of color have traditionally less access to, to healthcare because they can't afford it. Another interesting case was uh, with the Apple card. <clears throat> so Apple, with Goldman Sachs in 2020, launched the, uh, an, Apple, an Apple Pay card, uh, where, and, and, and this became viral because uh, one of the, one, a software developer who had a, uh, actually ended up having 350,000 Twitter, Twitter followers, because both of them, husband and wife, applied to the Apple card, the wife had even a better uh, credit score, but because of different factors, including income, that were not considered for women, the, the limit of the credit card was uh, 20 times more for the husband than for the wife. And when she applied back, was denied. So uh, again, this is in the measurement side, is how you're looking at, at the data. What parameters are you using in the model training uh, that are erroneous because you, you bring, you come from assumptions that are at start wrong. Another typical case is the labeling and the labeling is a very dear uh, matter to us at, uh, at my company because we, we handle a lot of the data uh, at Define AI, we, we do uh, uh, data for AI precisely. Uh, uh, we handle, uh, we collect and structure data. So the structuring or the labeling component is something we have uh, worked. I mean, I've worked uh, in more than a, with, in more than a decade, and our company is uh, specialized in this area. Uh, interesting enough, uh, now we're back. To, we're going back to the image uh, object recognition and uh, image recognition uh, area. Uh, excavating AI. Uh, which I totally recommend you guys to, to go through. Excavating AI is, um, was a research study, it was actually a publication, out of, out of, uh, the, uh, out of a, 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 a database called ImageNet, which is one of the largest uh, databases for where most commercial si systems base their object recognition patterns and models. And, uh, and research, research as well. So, and what happened was 600,000 images were, with a person label on it were removed from ImageNet after excavating AI uh, study came out. And the reason why was that, the, again, the way uh, the database is being, and it's an open source and re academic resource has been built, is being, is being built with, uh, Mechanical Turk uh, labelers, which for, for those who don't know what it is, it's an Amazon platform that uh, crowdsources uh, labeling, but with, uh, with a very, with, with, the way it is set up is really hard to, to get quality and, and spam detection and fraud detection. So you end up with tags, which is what the, um, what, what you can see here in the highlights, and you can probably see, but you, can, you will have access to these, uh, tags uh, associating completely, associating uh, girls in bikini to sluts, associating children with sunglasses to losers, and, and the list goes on and on. So with all of, uh, so that's, that's why 600,000 uh, images were removed, but this data is still, within most of our commercials, the commercial services that are out there in object recognition. Another example is the negative uh, set bias, and, um, and, and the good example for this is uh, the Amazon hiring uh, model. Uh, Amazon 
with hiring so many people. And it's actually not just Amazon. It turns out that Amazon is in the spotlight all the time. Everybody, everybody that is developing HR uh, systems, and this is why HR is one of the areas that organizations like Responsible AI is looking into, uh, financial services, healthcare, and HR, because it, it uh, touches uh, employability for people. So uh, when Amazon is, was scraping, um, when was scraping the, uh, their resumes that they were uh, using, and, and in comparison to the criteria that they were looking for, uh, had a huge bias against women. And the reason here is, is not, is, is a design problem, and it's the, the lack of data there, because traditionally, as we all know, uh, tech, the tech sector is highly male dominated. So it's again, how you design your model, and what do you do when there's no data? Uh, it's, it's, and we have some recommendations in the end, but what, when you don't have data, uh, there's synthetic data that can be f forged, or you just have to wait until there's data. That's, that's the, the danger of building systems with such negative uh, false representation of the data. Um, another, another very uh, interesting example is uh, with the Compass uh, algorithm. The Compass algorithm was, is a, was, a, was a, an algorithm to predict recidivism in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in going back to jail. And of course, again, uh, false positives against black people because mostly only black people were answering to surveys when in jail. And there was no, and actually this was an article that uh, ProPublica, uh, very long article, very, very, data scientist uh, accurate uh, article that I totally recommend everybody to read, showing and uh, basically unpacking how these, uh, these algorithms are built and how, uh, how biased they are from the source. Uh, again, because of representation of either the how you look at it, of the par parameters or, or the data itself. Finally, not uh, probably not finally, I have a few more examples, but I'm skipping a few for the sake of time. One uh, very interesting case, uh, the search results and how, how search results are affected by, 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 by bias in, uh, in the algorithms. In, uh, so Sophia Noble, it's another, uh, another author that I totally recommend you guys to read and to uh, search uh, TED Talks uh, and, and her book, Algorithms of Oppression. She starts, uh, well, in 2015, she unf unveils, um, this, this, this book came out in 2017, but it, it's, the, it's, the, it's six years of work looking at search results at Google that ser ser suddenly became uh, the replacement of libraries. It's the source of knowledge uh, today. And what happened is that uh, when, and be because she had the cause of the, of, of the, of the bias, when you would type black girls, every result or suggestion, which the, you kind of see it a little bit in the background, would come out with derogative uh, uh, recommendations. It's actually not just for the black girls, it's Asian girls, it's any ethnic girls that are not white. You see uh, anything related to pornography or derogative. So Google fixed it after this book, fix this part, but it goes everywhere. It's just, it's just, just to see that, uh, unfortunately, we, keep, we have to keep all these uh, com commercial systems on check, especially when they affect so many people uh, and so many people's knowledge. Another interesting one in the algorithmic bias, influencing uh, in the algorithmic bias is, is uh, and this is at the level of the, um, uh, analysis and data analysis is what happened in 2010 and 2012, and, uh, and I'm sure some of you remember this case, where uh, Facebook result, uh, Facebook um, uh, impacted the results and the outcomes of elections. And this happened with, with the fact that humans are 
humans have a tendency to imitate the people they, to imitate other humans. Humans imitate other humans. And in Facebook, in social networks, when you see your friends saying, I voted, or I got vaccinated, you have a tendency to follow. So this actually impacted 61 million extra voters that were not expected to come to the, to the elections and change the results of the elections. This is how, uh, this is the power of social media. Um, and I think I'm gonna skip a few more examples and, and the testing part is actually, it's the final one. It's a, a, I don't have a good example, but uh, anyone who works with, in data science and in machine learning knows that the way you test your models is very, I mean, it start, whenever you have a, a benchmark or a result of your model, you always have to question, how did you test it? And it's, it's something about, it's just saying, my, my model is better than Y or Z. It, it comes down to the, to the test set. And the test set, again, goes back to the beginning. What, how is the test set representing the demographics or the, uh, or the data population that you're looking at. Now, recommendations. I have a few here. The first recommendation has to do with, um, uh, I'm sorry, am I on the right one? Yes. Has to do with, uh, not, we should not, it, has, it goes back to when there's not enough representation of data because you cannot uh, replace, you cannot fake uh, um, uh, women's credit scores because they have, there's not enough history on that or because there's not enough women in tech uh, uh, features on it. So if, you can't, if there's not enough in the world, we, have to, we should wait. We should wait before we model anything. That's, that's honestly what I think. And the other, uh, and, but if we can replace the, the gaps with synthetic data, actually there's a Gartner study that I have a little bit down the list that shows that in 2030, most of the AI will be trained by synthetic data. Then synthetic data is actually on the rise and I, Huge fan of synthetic data uh, on our human computer interaction field. It's really rising. There's still a lot of resistance from a lot of data scientists, but I, I think this is a great way to, to, um, to uh, fill the gaps when data just doesn't exist. The second thing is, since everything starts in, the, in data, we should create more marketplaces of trusted uh, data sources, with trusted data sources. Uh, I also have a number of marketplaces examples that we have out there. Uh, Snowflake, Kaggle, uh, we have our own and more and more uh, in different segments of, of AI uh, are coming up and marketplaces uh, where community vet the data sets there and, and it's just not, a bi again, not a biased way of putting them there is, is, a, is what we see uh, as a trend. Uh, the other thing is about international standards for data uh, and, for, uh, and, to, and for unbiased data sets. Uh, it's a very hard thing to do. Uh, it's, it's a very hard thing to do, but it's not impossible. We do it every day in, at Define AI when we uh, create test sets or training sets for clients. And, and actually, it, uh, it makes it much more targeted and accurate and, and shorter. Um, governance. The governance goes in two ways. Uh, the people who produce data or touch the data part should not be training the models because it's very easy that the people who are modeling are already influenced or biased towards what type of data they should get. So we should have a separation almost, a ch a checks and balances between the people building, and building the data and building the models. And uh, like our, uh, the, the former uh, presenter was talking about, diverse teams. It's obvious that if you have a non-diverse, a very homogeneous team, you, you will only have one way of looking at the reality you're trying to predict. 
So diverse teams are absolutely mandatory. And, uh, but again, the numbers don't help. I have numbers down where you still see 5% of women in AI doing PhDs these days. Uh, this is uh, so this is just uh, uh, extra extra slides. I am pretty much done. I want to I want to thank you for your attention. Open for questions. Saying that I have some colleagues here in the audience that can also help answering more questions, and we we'll have five minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. Do we have questions? Anyone have a question? Would like to come up to the microphone? No? I have one for you. While we're waiting for a second. Absolutely. I do you, you, you know, are there solutions in the market that you would suggest, you know, can help folks when they're looking at biases? You, you talked about a lot of different things you talked about, but would you say is there a way to go buy something to help, you know? Is that uh, what I was going to say? I have lots of resources here and at each section of the recommendations. It, there is, it, it, the, the problem here is that it's, the, the knowledge is very dispersed, and, it's, and if you're starting in this field, it's hard to navigate it. So this is a good start, honestly. Uh, and, and also a good start is to look at some of these organizations that I mentioned here that are independent, non-profit, uh, that are non-commercial, that are not the big tech. Uh, I'm sorry, where are they? And they're not here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm back and forth on this. They are in your presentation. They are in my presentation. Yeah. Uh, and and open start, uh, that was, it was that. So uh, all of these, United, the, the National no, Responsible AI, yes. Um, uh, these are the open questions. I'm sorry. Where is it? There's two, two Responsible AI is one of them. Uh, okay, these are the organizations. Data and Society, uh, AI New Institute, uh, Partnerships on AI. All of these resources have a much more independent perspective uh, uh, and, help and, and bring people that are not commercially attached to an employer, that are, much, that are academics, they're a diverse group of people. I think what we, we, this is a, place, a good place to start if you want to have a complete unbiased perspective too. Mm, very good. All right, well, thank you, Danielle. I appreciate your uh, time today and a great speech. Thank, thank you, you very much. Okay.